Hi, it's me again, and I thought today we could talk about TV license detective and and talked about them for a while, have we? Are they real, are they not? Well, I was talking on Twitter the other night to my friend over at the TV license blog, and uh, he reminded me that I haven't touched this article that was out. They made the papers, I don't know if you clogged it, it was all over the shop. This is the one from The Sun. Inside BBC's covert surveillance operations and TV detection equipment used to catch suspected license fee invaders. There's always loads of debate when we talk about the detector vans and how they work or did they exist and stuff like that. I know what side of the fence I'll sit on and talk about it in a minute, but that's an interesting headline, right? Inside BBC's covert surveillance operations. And this all came about from an FOI request. It says here, where are we? A review into the methods by the Investigatory Powers Commission's office has now been unearthed through a freedom of information request by the TV licensing blog. So this is this is interesting. So I thought we could have a have a little chat about it today and go through this article together and a couple of other little bits that I've got on this. So while we're sitting down the prom here and it's a fairly nice day, I thought it would be nice to have a chat about it. So it goes on to say. The inspection report from 2022 says the Capita detection team generally deploying covert vehicles which contain detection equipment. It goes on. The success rate is limited with only a small number of deployments resulting in further enforcement action, such as the execution of a search warrant. This could be due to the limitations of the detection equipment, which is apparently struggling to keep up with the technological advancements in television viewing. Now, I, I get that back in the day when everyone had a CRT TV, it might have been possible when there was only a couple of channels as well to detect, that, there was some talk about it, it detects like the light signature and they can match it up to what's currently being broadcast. Okay, I get that. But what good is this detection equipment in today's day and age? How many ways are there in which you can watch television, not just broadcast television, but television shows in general? So you've got Freeview, you've got Sky, you've got Cable, you've got Freesat, you've got a multitude of different ways of streaming it, either through your broadband, through your phone, anything. How can they possibly detect what you're watching in today's day and age? They cannot. And it doesn't matter if they detect that you've got a television, because you can own a television without requiring a television license. As long as you don't watch a recording things being broadcast, or access BBC iPlayer. So the whole point's mute anyway. Yeah, I do believe they had vans. I mean, I've, well, I've, I've had a video of it. I'll put a, a thing on the screen here. There was, we, uh, there was an American show and they got inside a detector van and the whole thing's comedy. I'm not disputing that they had the vans. They had vans with TV lights and all that written on the side of them. It was a scare tactic to drive around and scare you. And in the history of all TV licensing, there's never been a prosecution, and there's been quite a few prosecutions, sadly, that have involved evidence given by a detective van. It says here that they use the evidence gleaned from detection to get search warrants or to go along with different methods after the fact. It's absolute nonsense. So I've got the actual FOI, I believe, here. Well, I've got some FOIs here, but I found this one earlier which I think was ridiculous. So the question was, can you please let me know how many TV detector vehicles you have operating in the UK and at what cost to the license payer? Fair question, right? You, you're a license fee payer, you want to know what the money gets spent on? I think that's a fair question. So what did they answer? Let's have a look. We can confirm under section one of the act that we hold recorded information relevant to your part of your request. So they know, they have the information, they do know. However, we consider that information about TV licensing detection resources and capability is exempt from disclosure under all those sections of the act. Uh, the disclosure would or be likely to prejudice the prevention or detection of crime the collection of the license fees and the BBC's ability to discharge its public functions. Okay, okay, so it's super secret spy equipment that they don't want you to know about, basically. So it goes on to say, we are satisfied in terms of the act 
that in all circumstances of the case, the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. Right, okay, so how's that work then? How does that outweigh the public? You pay, if you're a licensed repayer, you pay for this, and it says here, the cost of collection encompasses all aspects of TV licensing service provision and was 136.5 million pounds in 22-23. If you're a licensed fee payer, you may well be annoyed that some people are evading paying the license fee. And you would like to know what your money's been spent on in terms of being able to catch people evading the license fee. And they won't tell you. Why won't they tell you? There's only one reason they wouldn't tell you. It's because it's complete nonsense. It's complete and utter nonsense. And uh, yeah, there's a few more articles about this here. It's got my good old friend Tom Earnshaw, uh, Lad Bible, who copy and pastes the same, uh, the, the same bloody article every time he does it. He does make me laugh, Tom Earnshaw in Lad Bible. Every article, he, he does a lot of articles about the telly license. He does them more than I do at the minute. And they're all exactly the same. And he says here, the FOI from 2022 submitted by the TV licensing blog website reveals that a review into the methods used is uh, underway in the investigative plan. All right, so let's just go to the source then. Shall we, let's go over to TV licensing blog and see what my friend over there has got to say about it. That's probably the best bet. Let's go to the source. Right, let's have a look at this then. So it says here, TV licensing blog exclusive. The BBC's TV detection magic, let that motorcycle go. The BBC's TV detection magic is struggling to keep pace with the technology, according to a report by the official surveillance regulator. TV licensing blog has obtained a copy, we've done all that, haven't we? Uh, I'm not sure there's a lot of information here, to be honest. I mean, I'll put a clip in now of of that American one I was talking about, that American TV show where they got inside a van. That was, that was interesting. That was actually interesting, rare to see information. But then I met Ivan and Andy, TV license officers. Their mission, to make sure everyone with a TV has a license to watch it. Yes, it's quite a strong signal. It's not as glamorous as it looks. TV cheats are everywhere, and they can be pretty tough characters. <laughs> We've got a pretty strong signal there. Now, in the days of the CRT TVs... Ivan and Andy, TV license officers. Right, switch this on. Now I can select from this, pressing in the channel, and I'll start the house marker going. A lot of quiz programs are on, very, very popular. I press that again, and I get a recording of what I've been picking up. Detection evidence is never used during the prosecution of an alleged TV license evader in open court, and doing so would render that evidence liable for challenge and closer scrutiny. Exactly. That's why it's never been used, because then you could scrutinize the evidence and realize that it's complete and utter toss. And that's why in the history of all TV license prosecutions, never one has been done with evidence from a detective act. But there is an interesting bit on TV licensing blog here, which I, I find interesting. Unlike many other anti-TV license publications, TV licensing blog is of the view that television detection is a reality, not least because of official reports like this one, but it's used to nearly as widespread as effective as the BBC would like people to believe. Well, because the report came out, it's real, is it? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I've got a lot of respect for the guy that runs that, and uh, I'd like to do some stuff with him in the future. But we're, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. They had vans. The vans did exist. I've seen inside, not personally, but in that video, I've seen inside one of the vans. They did exist. There's enough pictures of them about to prove that the vans did exist. Being able to detect what people are watching, especially nowadays, has to be a myth. There's no way on earth, no way on earth that can be true. Is there? What do you think? Let me know what you think about it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we're going to have to agree to disagree with TV licensing, but in my opinion, maybe you disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. The, all these articles I'll link down below. Uh, the TV licensing blog one I'll put at the top so that you can go, because it goes on a bit and it is interesting and it's work, they write good stuff on there. So go and have a look 
let me know what you think about that. Why you down there clicking the links and leaving your comment, hit all the buttons and all of that stuff as well. Because if you do that, hopefully I'll get to see you in another video again soon, won't I? When hopefully it's a bit warmer out. It's got a bit nippy down here. A bit nippy. See you later.